Hi, this is Joanna. This video is uh, for you to help you get in touch with your body's signals. Hunger is one of those signals from the body and mind showing us what to do next and telling us something about ourselves, our body and mind and our emotions. So the purpose of getting in touch with the body and reading the signals from the body is not only to lose weight, but of course it will be a natural consequence of that, but also to support our emotional and physical well-being. It makes sense to me to, to divide our hunger into those three simple categories, natural hunger, emotional hunger, and over hunger. Each of them will have impact on us gaining weight or losing weight. So what is our goal? Our goal is to get to natural hunger. My purpose, my job is to help people manage their mind in a way that will help them move from emotional hunger and over hunger to natural hunger hunger that also means natural weight and natural way of eating but if you hear me referring to biology it's um, it's coming from dr katrin shanahan and dr jason funk who you may know as the diet doctor so let's take a look at our different types of hungers over hunger is a sensation based on a natural diet hormones and neurotransmitters out of balance and you simply crave more, more than your body needs. You create a sense of over desire for food. We overeat so then, then we are overweight. So that's why it's over hunger. Everything is over the normal level. How do you experience over hunger? It's painful intolerable and nauseating. Uh, I remember when I was there <laughs> years ago, I hunger was emergency. It was actual emergency because the pain was so, so, so severe. I would eat anything. And how do you experience natural hunger? It comes in waves. It doesn't feel like an emergency. It's simply there, you can observe it, but it doesn't affect your sugar level. It doesn't affect your, how you, how you feel, feel in your head. You don't feel dizzy or anything. You can function very well intellectually and emotionally. It doesn't affect your emotions and it just comes in waves and you can wait through it. How do you experience emotional hunger? Well, very often you feel empty or you feel emotion that is uncomfortable and you don't want to feel it. And then you think that you are hungry and you reach for food. But really, when you tune in to your stomach, you may notice that you are not hungry. Of course, it may overlap. You are hungry at the same time as you want to eat for emotional reasons to alleviate the emotional discomfort. But most of the time, if we feel emotional discomfort before we reach for food and we tune into the stomach, we may realize that we are not only not hungry, but that we are pretty full and we definitely do not need food. Now, what is the reason for it? What specifically in our diet affects it? Most of the time you will experience this kind of hunger after a few hours or a night of not eating because your diet may be consisting mostly of simple carbs, breads, pastas, rice, cookies, and diet that is full of unhealthy fats, the fats that we should not be eating that have dramatic impact on our insulin and leptin. So basically the base of this diet when you have overhunger is simple carbs and the lack of nutrients. In natural hunger, which is our goal always, 
to get there. Natural hunger, we experience, we can train our body to experience natural hunger. That means not so painful when we eat in a natural way. And natural way means these days nutrient dense foods. So no simple carbs of mini or minimal amount of simple carbs. We need to focus on nutrients, nutrient dense foods in order to come back to our natural weight and natural hunger. That will be complex carbs, vegetables, and clean protein and healthy fats. If you experience emotional hunger, why is it? Does it have to do anything with your diet? Well, first of all, emotional hunger doesn't come from your stomach. It comes from your mind. Your mind is simply informing you to eat something because you feel uncomfortable with your emotions. So instead of addressing the emotions, which most of us are not um, familiar with how to do, the simplest way to feel better is to increase the dopamine, the neurotransmitter dopamine by eating. You can also increase naturally your dopamine, but it takes just more work and more effort. And if your brain is untrained in doing this, um, this will not be the brain's first choice. But what happens with food in emotional eating? We will want to reach for foods that is raising the dopamine significantly. So we will reach for carbs, the comfort food. Anything with flour, sugar, sugar and fat, specifically fattening. And uh, also, if you are not paying attention to your fats, you are likely to reach for foods with unhealthy fats. So you want to avoid the feeling, you reach for the food, dealing with the feeling would, would prevent you from overeating. But if you don't want to do this, you reach for food and you put additional pounds on your body. We will also experience different feelings. Uh, I remember that experiencing overhunger also came with a sort of panic. While in natural hunger, you will simply experience calm because your mind still can be focused on something more important instead of just on food. And this idea is not for us telling us not to eat. It's simply managing our bodies in a way that Hunger doesn't get in the way. And if we want to lose weight, we know what to do. And hunger is one of the tools. How does the food affect the neurotransmitters in the body and the hormones in the body? When we talk about food, diets, and so on, we always talk about insulin, ghrelin, and leptin. Insulin is a hormone that regulates the sugars in the body. And actually, too high insulin is associated with issues in every system in the body. So we don't want to have too high insulin on a regular basis in a persistent way. So how is insulin behaving in each of those uh, types of eating and types of hunger? So emotion, in emotional eating, you are full, so probably you, your insulin is already high because you ate. Every time we eat, insulin goes high, but every time we eat concentrated substances like sugar, alcohol, flour, uh, flour, sugar, fat, insulin will go through the roof. So you are probably already full, but you keep eating, so you keep raising your insulin and gaining weight because high insulin equals the body is in the fat storage mode. Lower insulin means the body is in fat burning mode. At least lowering the insulin, we are creating conditions for the body to lose weight, to access fat storage. And when we have lower insulin, when we create a period of rest, in between meals. In overhunger, you already know that you feel over desire, unnatural desire for food. If you reach for food that is full of simple carbs and unhealthy fats, a note on fats, 
drkate.com has a simple PDF on what are healthy fats. You are also in a state of high insulin, another hormone that is playing a role in weight loss and weight gain is leptin. Leptin tells us if we are full or if we should keep eating. But if your diet is unnatural, if there is a lot of processed foods and simple carbs, you will create a lot of inflammation in the body. And when there is inflammation, the signal from leptin is blocked. There is less communication between the cells, perfect condition for weight gain. Also, you may keep eating because you don't have enough nutrients. This is diet that lacks nutrients and the body will tell you to eat, to keep eating until it gets enough protein. How much protein is there in simple carbs? Not much. And if there is anything, it's low quality. So you really need to look at the quality of the nutrients that you put into the body. And you may notice once you finally make the leap, make the change into the natural way of eating, when you eat nutrient-dense foods, you will notice something interesting. You don't need that much food. So if you prioritize protein and complex carbs, you will notice that your body simply doesn't need much more and you are full and satisfied. Let's circle back to hunger and how we can use hunger in a way that will help us lose weight and what hunger actually is. So in a natural hunger, which is our goal to get here to the natural way of eating, we experience hunger in a natural way coming in waves. You can wade through the wave, wave like a few minutes and you will not feel the hunger. So I'm, I know I'm simplifying here, but in that moment when you feel the hunger and you do not feed your body, you do not eat, your body now can access um, fat for fuel on your body. And if you eat, you give your body energy that is more accessible to it, but then your body doesn't reach to the fat storage. And when you skip a meal, when you don't feed the body in this moment, your body has to make the effort to go to the fat storage. This is not body's preference. However, this is how we can lose weight. If you experience natural hunger, it will be manageable for you. This is when people do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is not only, and by the way, it's not for everybody. So make sure that you check with your doctor. Um, so intermittent fasting is not only for the purpose of losing weight, but also it has other uh, wellness benefits. Now, when you are on this kind of diet, simple carbs, lack of nutrients, and you experience hunger, that hunger is an emergency. It's not a good place to start accessing fat on your body for fuel. It's not a good place to do intermittent fasting. It will simply be too painful. So uh, when you experience hunger here, the best thing for you is to reach for, for nutrient dense foods. And this way you are slowly moving this way and you are slowly going to decrease inflammation, increase nutrients, and support your body in natural weight loss. Now, what to do with emotional eating? Uh, when you experience emotional hunger, <laughs> you already know that there is no physical hunger. So the way to address emotional hunger is to address your emotions, is to address what's going on in your mind and move through the emotions. Because remember, the reason you overeat, the reason you eat rich for food in that moment is you want to is because you want to avoid that emotional discomfort. And as long as we will keep avoiding what we need to deal with internally, we not only are not going to solve the problems, but we are going to keep gaining weight. So 
remember that the solution to emotional and internal issues is not food. If it was, it would be enough to eat something and the problem would be resolved. But there's no amount of food that will ever solve our emotional issues. So this is what I help people with in coaching. So my goal is to move people from uh, emotional eating to natural eating, emotional hunger to natural hunger, and from over hunger to natural hunger. Very often people are here and here at the same time. So I help people do this and my goal is to get you here. Now, you may wonder why not just do this, right? Why not just stop eating this kind of food and start eating nutrients, nutrient dense foods? Well, of course you can just do this. Some people simply just do this. And then for majority of people, don't you think that there will be some resistance here? Keeping in mind that when you overeat, you have over desire for food and you experience the over hunger, it's because you eat a lot of addictive substances. So don't you think that there will be some resistance? A little bit, maybe a lot. How about temper tantrum? So there will be an inner conflict that we will have to resolve. So my job is to help you with the mental part of the process, but you need to keep in touch with your body and read the signals from your body and be honest with yourself what you actually feel. Thank you for watching.